Hey friends, let's talk about VBAC, Vaginal Birth After Caesarean Section. Before reading this VBAC and going to study the VBAC, you need to have a very basic concept. That is, Vaginal Delivery an uncomplicated vaginal delivery is far far better than caesarean section in terms of mother fetus hospital everything vaginal delivery is always preferred before caesarean section whenever possible we go for vaginal delivery rather than caesarean section so first of all this concept should be in your mind second that's why the vaginal birth after caesarean section because previous caesareans are there and if the delivery happens the vaginal delivery happens that is very good thing but the only problem is what uterine rupture it is the risk of uterine rupture that prevents VBAC. So this is the villain of VBAC. Now we need to consider the risk of uterine rupture and the benefit of vaginal delivery ratio. We need to consider this ratio and go ahead with the VBAC. Now, what is dangerous in this thing? Previous uterine scar. The uterine scar is the dangerous thing. And uterine scar can rupture and the uterus can rupture if uterine contraction happens in, nor in the process of labor. So whenever the uterine, uterine rupture is there, there will be hemoperitoneum hypovolemic shock and even death can happen so it's very risky so what is the importance here is you need to identify and effectively predict the risk of rupture of the uterine scar that is already there in the pregnant lady so you need to predict the risk how you predict the risk the conditions with the low risk of uterine ruptures are CARES incision that is lower transverse incision on the LUS lower uterine segment whether the scar healing has been done or not the previous scar was stitched well how uh, uh, what is the time gap between these two deliveries if it is more than 18 months, then it's considered as a okay. Single scar, multiple scar. If the single scar is there, then again the risk is low. But what are the high risk of rupture? The classic incision, vertical incision, T shaped incision, running incision, all these kind of incisions. If there previously then it is a very high risk for uterine rupture and in that cases you should go for caesarean section and don't think about VBAC at all if the uh, healing is not done because of the time is not there less than 18 months between two uterine surgeries so again it is a very high risk multiple scar more than two more than equal to two scars are also uh, considered as a high risk previous myomectomy in which full thickness of the myometrium was insides that is also a very very high risk of rupture so in low risk patients you can go for VBAC in high risk patients you should avoid VBAC now 
what are the other factors that can predict a good outcome a good vbec chance what are that those factors spontaneous onset of labor good bishop score of the cervix more than 6 previous vaginal deliveries the history of previous vaginal delivery makes the pelvis of the woman very very adaptive to the normal vaginal birth so it will take very less time for all the stages of the labor and that's why very small amount of uterine contractions will be needed and the risk of rupture is low so it is again a very good predictor small size baby no mal positions no mal presentations so another concept is how much you try and contraction you will need for delivery of the baby in case of mal positions and good size of babies and mal presentations you need a very strong uterine contractions and that is a risk of risk for uterine rupture previous vaginal deliveries in which the uterus is more sorry in the pelvis of the woman is more and more adaptive to the vaginal birth that's why again a less amount of uterine contractions will be needed so it is a good predictor if the cervix is uh, well effaced and dilated then again you need a less amount of uterine contractions all these things you need less amount that's why they are the good predictors for example if you want to go for induction of labor then it is not done in vbec because induction of labor will will require more and more amount of uterine contraction that will be a very high risk for uterine rupture so again induction is not done in vbec another thing whenever you try to go for vbec what essential knowledge you should have is the identifying the earliest signs of uterine rupture while the patient is in labor what are those signs the first sign is fetal distress fsh would be go down maternal pulse is another a good sign earlier sign more than 100 is also a, a predictor of uterine rupture systolic bp down that means already the rupture has been done and there may be hypovolemic shock uterine contour can be lost unexpected bleeding pv can be there fetal station loss means the fetal re, uh, regresses inside the ut inside the pelvis all these things you should be very knowing and uh, uh, have a knowledge of Another thing is the preparedness if uterine ruptures really happens or it's on the verge of uterine rupture. Well preparedness defined by the OT staff is ready 24 hours. PSE, pre-anesthetic checkup already done before. Blood products are arranged. A nice you should be there. So all this these factors are big, uh, your preparedness again if the uterine rupture really happens so these are the important aspect of vbec thank you friends